What should you do as a landlord if a tenant is damaging your home and still living there? Well, in today's video, that's the scenario we're going to walk through. We're going to show you the steps that you can take to get those damages repaired or that tenant out. One of the tools that we're going to show you today is the lease violation notice. And I think this is uh, the most important thing that you can utilize uh, to move forward in that. And if you do not have a good copy or you would like another copy of one that you can reference, perhaps make your own, just let me know in the comments below and I will send that over if it is something that you think will help you. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jason. I'm with the Landlord Launch and I help uh, landlords self-manage their rental property. We do this through um, online workshops, through on-demand training, and through access to resources. Resources like this video that you're watching right now where we are going to talk about those things that help you move forward in your business like getting somebody to pay for those damages or getting out of your home. So having said that, let's jump right into the content here. Um, so I would say that First and foremost, this is something that you're going to want to deal with immediately. Do not let this linger. If you know there's damages there, don't wait until the end of the lease and tally it up because um, whatever those are, whatever those damages are, whether they're caused by uh, kids, by animals, by the tenants themselves, it's likely going to continue and all you're doing is compounding damages upon damages upon damages. There is a chance that potentially if you deal with this right now that one we can get these taken care of and then hopefully they will learn a lesson not to damage anymore or worst case scenario we have to ask them to leave and then hopefully their deposit will cover a good portion if not all of that. If you let those damages compound over the course of the lease um, they're likely going to be it's likely going to be the security deposit isn't going to be enough to cover everything that uh, they're going to do to your home. So um, first and foremost, how do we identify when damages are happening? I recommend all landlords do a quarterly inspection of their home. Uh, one of the things that I do personally is I will go in and do like a quarterly filter change and this does a couple things it allows me to get into the home allows gives me a good reason to be in the home um, without making you know the 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 tenant too nervous perhaps. Um, I don't frame it as like an inspection. I say I'm going to come in, I'm going to change your filter, I'm going to do uh, you know, a couple other things, check their smoke alarms. And one, this allows me to keep good filters in the HVAC system and maintain it, but then also allows me to get my eyes on the property, see if there's any unauthorized pets, any unauthorized tenants, look for any damages, things along those lines. Um, and then if there are any violations or any issues or whatever else, um, I'm going to document them in real time. You could even use some sort of inspection form if you would like, uh, a checklist of the things that you're going to do and then notes and then if there's any damage you can document the damage and then uh, I would say take pictures of that as well in real time. Um, from there what we are going to do is we are going to issue that lease violation um, notice to the resident. And the lease violation notice is going to state specifically what the problem is and what they need to do to resolve it. So in the case of damages, I never, I guess, allow the resident to fix the damages themselves. Like if somebody in there is handy or somebody says, well, I'll just repaint it. No, if they've damaged it or whatever, one of two things is there's one of two things that I want to happen. One, they allow me to come in and have it repaired by my own vendors. I will charge them. And what I will do there is I will give them an estimate up front that, hey, this is going to cost $250. I ask him to pay that up front. I pay the vendors, everything's fixed. Um, the other thing that they can do is if they want to find somebody, like if they want to shop around and maybe find a better price or whatever else, that's fine too. But that has to be done by a licensed contractor and it has to be approved by me, the landlord, because I want to make sure they are in fact licensed and qualified to do the job, you know, not just uh, some person they pick up off the street that says they know how to paint or repair cabinets or whatever the case may be. Um, so those are the two options I give them in terms of remedying that situation. Um, now, most states have a a period of time which uh, a landlord needs to give a tenant to cure the situation. Um, those will all differ, but whatever that is, uh, I'm also a little bit reasonable. If they've destroyed five cabinets and they can't get a contractor in or I can't get a contractor in for a month, then you know I'm going to give them the time they need to get that repaired uh, because it is to my 
uh, benefit and, and, and advantage to keep a resident in place if I think that I can get this type of behavior under control um, and avoid the, the turnover costs and um, have that repaired in real time and paid for as opposed to again accumulating that and trying to cover it with the security deposit because that usually doesn't work out. Um, but give them the time, get the, get, get the stuff uh, taken care of and then re-inspect. And then if they're doing it, and you've approved the contract and you re-inspect and it hasn't been completed, the work hasn't started and that type of stuff, well then that is um, basically a notice to move out at that point in time. Because like I know some of the notices that you give, the lease violation says you have seven days or 10 days or 14 days to cure this or consider this your 30 day notice to vacate. So then it moves on. If they're not gonna be serious, they're not gonna take care of the home, I don't want them there anyway. I'd much rather take the hit now, get them out, cover the damages with the deposit, release it to some who wants to be there and who's going to take care of the home um, rather than let them continue to destroy the home for another three, six, nine, twelve months and then um, uh, be thousands and thousands of dollars uh, in damages that the security deposit is not going to cover and I probably have no chance of actually collecting from that tenant anyway. Um, so that's it. I think that um, if you follow those steps, I think that you should be able to nip that in the butt pretty quick. And uh, it's if again, if they're not, if they don't take care of, it, they're not agreeable to it. You don't want the tenant there anyway, so you might as well get them out because it's just going to get worse if you wait. So, having said that, the uh, lease violation agreement. If you don't have one, or if you have one um, and you're not so sure about it, or if you just want to see what the verbiage is on the ones that I use and the way that it's structured, set up, let me know uh, in the comments below. I will send you a copy of that. You can download it. You can edit it. You can make it your own you can use it today um, or you can compare it to what you have and you know steal whatever you want to uh, again I just if it helps more than happy to send it over to you let me know I'll send I'll send that uh, let me know in the comments and I'll send that over to you so that is actually all I have on today's video I hope it was helpful this is Jason with the landlord launch and we will see you next time